Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Professor Abdul Salam Yasin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Sulaimani, giving a talk on surgical embolectomy for acute limb ischemia. You can watch and download this lecture from my YouTube channel using the URL at the bottom of the slide. Limp ischemia is defined as a sudden decrease in limb perfusion that causes a potential threat to limb viability, manifested by ischemic rest pain, ischemic ulcers, and or gangrene. In patients who present in less than 24 hours or to within two, two weeks of the acute event, acute limb ischemia can occur as a result of an embolic or local thrombosis in a previously asymptomatic patient. Although little information is available on the incidence of acute limb ischemia, several registries and surveys suggest an incidence of about 140 uh, per million cases per year. Oral reports an incidence of 1.7 cases per 10,000 per year, with a mortality rate of 26% and an amputation rate of 37%. Even with newer endovascular techniques that include thrombolysis, published data report a 10 to 30% 30-day amputation rate. An embolus is a material foreign to the bloodstream, which may become lodged in a vessel causing its obstruction. Simple emboli are due to blood clot. The sources of blood clot are most commonly mural thrombus following a myocardial infarction, which accounts for 30% of cases, mitral stenosis, cardiac arrhythmias, particularly atrial fibrillation and aneurysms. Emboli can lodge in any organ resulting in ischemia. Limb ischemia may present with pain, pallor, paresis, pulselessness, paresthesia, and poikilothermia. Well, now this uh, picture is taken of an old addition of a short practice of surgery comparing or demonstrating the clinical features of uh, an uh, aortic embolus. So the symptoms and signs of embolism uh, consist of pain, par paralysis, pallor, pulselessness, beside paresthesia or sometimes uh, complete anesthesia. And this picture shows a specimen of an aortic embolectomy specimen showing an extension thrombus proximally to the renal arteries and distally into the iliac arteries. This picture also was taken from an old edition uh, of a short practice of surgery uh, by Bailey and Gloves. <coughs> and the ischemia may be acute, example due to thromboembolism, trauma and thrombosis. Acute on chronic, such as thrombosis, uh, uh, super uh, or complicating atherosclerosis, or chronic uh, due to atherosclerotic arterial obstruction. Well, clinically, the distinction between an embolus and a local thrombosis is important. In uh, embolic arterial occlusion, there is no preceding history of claudication. A source for emboli can usually be found, example recent MI, cardiac arrhythmias, mitral stenosis, aortic aneurysm, artificial valve, and uh, loss of function occurs within four to six hours after the onset of pain. While in uh, atherosclerotic narrowing with thrombosis, there is a preceding history of claudication. A source of emboli 
can be found and loss of function not present within hours because collaterals have had time to be established. In prior to 1963, prior to 1963, 50% of patients used to die from complications of open surgeries under GA to remove thromboemboli from affected arteries. However, the approach has dramatically changed when an American surgeon invented a balloon-tipped catheter to remove the arterial and venous thrombi with a simple procedure. Dr. Thomas Fogarty, born at 1934, received a patent for his Fogarty balloon embryotomy catheter, which has since become an industry standard. The device allows a thin balloon to be inserted into a patient's artery and guided uh, through an occlusion. It is then inflated and withdrawn along with the uh, blockage. Fogarty's catheter uh, revolu revolutionized vascular surgery uh, and his most uh, uh, widely used technique still uh, the, the, the most widely used technique for blood clot removal and encouraged advances for other minimally invasive surgeries including angioplasty. This is the uh, way a Fogarty catheter uh, works. It is uh, advanced uh, beyond the thrombus and then the balloon is inflated and the balloon is uh, the catheter is withdrawn to remove the thrombus. That is uh, a picture of an actual uh, Fogarty embolectomy catheter, and this is a, s a picture of a specimen uh, of the uh, clots removed uh, uh, via the operation of embolectomy. In this lecture, four cases of upper and lower limb acute ischemia due to thromboembolism will be presented. The indications, contraindications, technique, and complications of surgical thromboembolectomy for acute limb ischemia will be discussed in view of the relevant literature. A 43 years old lady presented herself with pain, coldness, and spots of bluish discoloration of the fingers of eight days duration. She had no significant cardiac disease and never smoked before. She described a similar attack of pain and dark discoloration of the hand one year earlier, which was managed conservatively at that time by an internist without consultation of a vascular surgeon. Physical examination revealed a marked atrophy of the right hand and forearm in comparison with the left upper limb. Bluish discoloration was evident in the palm and fingers. The hand was called ipsilateral axillary, brachial, radial, and ulnar pulses were all absent, while the right carotid pulse and pulses in the other limbs were normal. There was no pulsating mass in the right neck, as well as no thrill or brewery, and cardiac examination was not. So this is a picture of the hand with a bluish discoloration on the fingers. Comparing the two hands, showing uh, atrophy or wasting of the muscles of the right hand in comparison with the left hand they showed normal sized heart with no evidence of a cervical rib. CG was normal. No diagnosis was thromboembolic arterial obstruction 
due to sudden onset of pain. However, the previous history of a similar pain coupled with marked twisting of muscles indicated chronicity of the disease. So the picture was in favor of recurrent thromboembolism. The source of thromboembolism had to be determined by further investigations like echocardiography and arch autography. So these pictures show selective angiography of the innominate artery which was performed via the transfemoral approach. There was a filling defect interpreted as a big clot at the origin of the uh, right subclavian artery just before the origin of the internal mammary and vertebral arteries right carotid artery flow was normal there were plenty of collaterals indicating a long-standing stenosis or occlusion It became clear that this lady had recurrent thromboembolism from a clot at the origin of the right subclavian artery. She was in need of a major surgical intervention to deal with the proximal clot and a minor intervention to remove the thromboemboli from the brachial artery and its territory. Under local anesthesia, the right brachial artery bifurcation was exposed. The vessels were relatively small. A small arteriotomy was made in the brachial artery and a 3F Fogarty catheter was selectively passed down the radial and ulnar arteries. Organized clots were removed followed by a moderate backflow Irrigation by heparinized saline was also done. The catheter could pass for a distance of 10 cm only. The catheter was also passed proximally to a distance of 15 cm to dilate the artery. This was followed by a brisk anti-grade flow. The arteriotomy was then closed by 6O polypropylene suture. So in this picture on the left side, the exposure of the brachial artery uh, is shown after division of the uh, by cipital aponeurosis through an S-shaped incision in the anti-cubital fossa. And on the right side, we can see an operative photograph of our patient after completion of the uh, brachial embolectomy and the closure of the arteriotomy by 6O polypropylene suture. The pulse was visible and palpable in the brachial, radial and ulnar arteries, but neither the radial nor the ulnar pulses could be felt at the rest. The second case was a 35 years old man presented with pain in the left upper limb for more than 25 days which started suddenly. He was a heavy and chronic smoker. The patient had no significant cardiac disease before. He had consulted doctors and was given analgesic drugs. He was also advised by a cardiologist for a peripheral angiography. ECG, chest x-ray and echo were all normal. In these pictures we can see the hand of the patient. The hand was viable 
but colder than the right hand with a bluish discoloration of the tips of the fingers and absent radial and brachial pulses. The provisional diagnosis was a lately presented thromboembolic occlusion of the brachial artery. Transfemoral left upper limb angiography was performed and revealed an abrupt occlusion of the left brachial artery just above the bifurcation with collateral vessels feeding the forearm and hand. So here we can see the uh, occlusion of the brachial artery and the abundant collaterals. The patient was given anticoagulants, 5,000 international units of unfractionated heparin, 6 hourly intravenously, and then under local anesthesia with light sedation, left brachial artery was exposed. There was dense adhesion due to periarthritis, and the artery was pulseless and full with hard clots. A small arteriotomy was made in the artery and size 3F Fogarty catheter passed first proximally and then distally. A long organized clot was removed with a difficulty followed by a good back bleeding. Irrigation with a copious amount of herpenicillin was done. The artery was then closed by 5O polypropylene suture. Medivac drain was placed and the wound was closed in layers. Post-operative condition was good, warm hand, but radial pulse could not be felt. You can see an operative photograph of the brachial artery after completion of the uh, brachial embolectomy. Two hands post two weeks post operatively we can see the hands of the patient with a better viability. Third case was a case of femoral embolectomy for acute lower limb ischemia. The picture on the left side shows the ischemic foot and the one on the right side shows the clots removed through the operation of femoral embolectomy. Fourth and the last case was a lady of 51 presented with severe pain of both legs and feet of more than 45 days duration. She was a known case of chronic atrial fibrillation she used to smoke heavily for more than 10 years and she was managed by intravenous heparin without a response. On examination, she was in severe pain. Her respiration was difficult. Both legs were cold like an ice. Movement of feet and toes was absent. All pulses were absent on the left side starting from the femoral level. Right femoral pulse was palpable but weak, while distal pulses were absent. The left calf was tender to touch. This picture shows the legs of the patient with advanced ischemia. The physical findings were consistent with advanced irreversible ischemia, mainly on the left side. The underlying etiology was suspected to be a long-standing thromboembolic arterial occlusion. Abdominal arthrography and bilateral femoral arteriography was ordered. The result was a total occlusion of the right distal superficial femoral artery and left external iliac artery with extensive collaterals. And these 
where and geographic pictures shows it showing the total occlusion of the mid right superficial femoral artery and occlusion of the left external iliac artery The decision, the decision to do femoral embolectomy was difficult as it could be followed by acute myoglobinuria and death though it could minimize the level of amputation if the patient survives. Embolectomy was not performed due to the state of advanced irreversible ischemia and the, therefore the orthopedic surgeon was consulted to consider amputation. Discussion. Acute lower limb ischemia is a dramatic event carrying a high risk of amputation and perioperative morbidity and mortality. Currently, the majority of acute lower limb ischemia, about 70%, is due to arterial thrombosis, which generally occurs in the setting of pre-existing vascular lesion. This condition is very common in patients with diabetes. Clinical representation in case of thrombosis on atherosclerotic stenosis, the so-called acute on chronic ischemia, may be less severe, but treatment is generally more challenging than acute lower limb ischemia due to embolism. Treatment options for acute limb ischemia. For acute limb ischemia, there are generally three treatment options. The catheter-directed thrombolysis, anticoagulation with observation, and surgical thromboembolectomy. Catheter-directed thrombolysis is less invasive than surgical thromboembolectomy and is known to be effective for the treatment of acute limb ischemia. However, catheter-directed thrombolysis needs special facilities such as radiological intervention room and trained personnel. In some cases, the patients cannot undergo radiological intervention due to impaired renal function or allergy to radiocontrast dye. So catheter-directed thrombolysis is not always available for all patients. Therefore, surgical thromboembolectomy may be the only option for the patients with acute limb ischemia, when anticoagulation alone is ineffective and catheter-directed thrombolysis is not applicable. After the invention of the balloon catheter by Fogarty in 1963, surgical thromboembolectomy was considered the gold standard treatment for many years in patients with acute lower limb ischemia. So the indications versus the contraindications of arterial thromboembolectomy the indication is acute limb ischemia due to thromboembolism and the best results are expected in early presented cases before the state of irreversible ischemia. While the contraindication, the only contraindication for arterial embolectomy is frank gangrene. Limitations Surgical thromboembolectomy for acute limb ischemia using Fogarty catheter is basically a blind procedure. Therefore, the complete removal of thromboemboli 
in all calf arteries is difficult even if completion and geography or radiological intervention is performed. Complications For Garty catheter thromboembolectomy is generally considered a safe procedure. Complications of Fogarty balloon catheter thromboembolectomy can include arterial perforation, arterial rupture, intimal injury, arteriovenous fistula, and pseudoaneurysms. It can also lead to myointimal hyperplasia. The surgical set used in uh, arterial thromboembolectomy is a simple set consisting of basic surgical instruments besides some vascular clamps. Exposure of the femoral arteries. Start the incision 1 to 2 cm above the inguinal skin fold. Go lateral to the course of the artery to avoid damage of the inguinal lymph nodes which are located anterior to the vessels. Injury to inguinal lymph nodes results in post-operative lymphatic leak, seroma, and wound infection. A too far incision may miss the deep femoral artery. Technique Mostly, local anesthesia is sufficient. The artery bulging with the clot is exposed and held up by slings. It's important to expose both the superficial and deep femoral arteries in the lower limb and both radial and ulnar arteries in the forearm. Through a transverse or longitudinal incision, the clot begins to extrude and is removed together with the embolus. Arterial clamps are applied as bleeding occurs, noting the degree of back bleeding. Fogarty catheterization is the most effective method of removing proximal and distal thrombus and also allows an embolus or thrombus to be removed from a vessel removed from the arteriotomy. The catheter, 5F or 6F for lower limb and 3F or 4F for the upper limb, is introduced until it is deemed to have passed the limit of the thrombus. The balloon is then inflated and the catheter withdrawn slowly together with the clot. The procedure is repeated until the bleeding occurs. The method is valuable in patients with an aortic bifurcation embolus since the clot and embolus can be extracted by insertion of balloon catheters via the common femoral arteries in the groin and the patient is saved from a laparotomy. Postoperatively, anticoagulant therapy is continued. Prevention of further emboli is achieved by the treatment of the cause whenever possible and by reducing the chance of further thrombus formation by using long-term anticoagulation with warfarin. Results of embolectomy in the upper limb the procedure of arterial thromboembolectomy with the Fogarty catheter was established in 1962. Numerous studies have been published studying thromboembolectomies of the lower extremities. Limited information, however, is available following thromboembolectomy of the upper extremity after arterial occlusion. Hernandez Richter et al. studied the long-term results of this procedure and concluded that in most cases this procedure represents a successful surgical method for the acute treatment of arterial occlusion of the upper extremity. Results of embolectomy in the lower limb 
surgical arterial thromboembolectomy is an efficient treatment for acute arterial thromboemboli of lower limbs, especially if a single large artery is involved. Unfortunately, residual thrombus propagation of thrombi, chronic atherosclerotic disease, and vessel injuries secondary to balloon catheter passage may limit the clinical success rate. Intraoperative angiography. It has been well established that intraoperative angiography after thromboembolectomy may frequently detect arterial imperfections such as incomplete restoration of perfusion in below the knee arteries, propagation of thrombi, or the presence of underlying steno-occlusive lesions, which may be responsible for the early failure. Moreover, vessel injuries secondary to balloon catheter passage may be detected. The hybrid procedures. Over the last decade, various additional percutaneous techniques have been proposed for the treatment of acute lower limb ischemia, including mechanical thrombolysis, thrombus fragmentation, and intraluminal thromboaspiration, angioplasty, and covered stenting, the so-called endovascular techniques. When surgical embolectomy is combined with endovascular techniques, the procedure is named hybrid procedure. This may improve the success rate. So the take-home messages of our lecture, acute limb ischemia due to thromboembolism is a surgical emergency with a high morbidity and mortality. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment are crucial to save the affected limbs. It is very important to distinguish acute embolic arterial obstruction in which embolectomy is most likely beneficial from the chronic atherosclerotic obstruction and the acute on chronic arterial obstruction due to thrombosis superadded to atherosclerosis for which embolectomy is not expected to succeed. In acute embolic lip ischemia, embolectomy should be performed as soon as possible provided the limb is viable. On the other hand, frankly dead limbs should not receive this procedure. Thromboembolectomy by means of Fogarty catheter is a simple, easy to do surgical procedure, but attention to details is paramount to achieve success and minimize complications. And these are the uh, references used in the preparation of our lecture. And with this nice photograph of Baghdad, I would like to conclude my lecture. This is Professor Abdul Salam Yasin Taha signing off from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani.